Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you in the sight of everyone. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. I'm recording today from our clothing closet as a, first and foremost, as a reminder of the ongoing mission of the church. Now, the clothing closet itself has not been fully opened since uh, the restrictions went into place, but it is a reminder that the mission of the church continues and that our call to love God and neighbor has not ended. And in fact, um, we remain committed to the clothing closet, but we will also once again have a, a summer meal program for local school children, and we continue to be committed to the mission of SAFE, even in this time of isolation. But I've also stationed myself here because the psalm I'm going to read is the one I started with today, which talks about sheltering in the presence of God, God's presence as a refuge. And I remembered uh, a few weeks ago when we had a storm go through and a tornado warning and we we ended up sitting in the hallway uh, at the parsonage. Uh, only in retrospect did I realize that the church does have at least a partially subterranean area down here. And if we do have a similar um, event in the future, this may very well be where I go. A shelter in a storm. And so I think it is a beautiful place to reflect on the message of this psalm today. This Sunday, we are going to celebrate our graduates, our college graduates, and, and um, even in this strange time, we want to celebrate those important accomplishments. So if you have a graduate you would like me to shout out on Sunday, please uh, send me a message. Uh, it will also be, be Mother's Day. And so we will remember all those mothers uh, that we love now and that have, have gone before us. And so it will be a joyous Sunday this Sunday. So let me know if I can uh, help you participate in worship in any of those ways. With that said, let us pray. New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. So the psalm I started with is Psalm 31. It is the appointed psalm for this Sunday and, and a beautiful, beautiful prayer. Hear these words. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will exalt and rejoice in your steadfast love, because you have seen my affliction. You have taken heed of my adversities and have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. 
but I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Do not let me be put to shame, O Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go dumbfounded to Sheol. Let the lying lips be spilled, stilled that speak insolently against the righteous with pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you in the sight of everyone. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wonder, wondrously shown his steadfast love to me. When I was beset as a city under siege, I have said in my alarm, I am driven far from your sight, but you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Amen. It's easy to feel like we're waiting for the Lord right now. It seems like we're waiting for something. That might as well be it. In this psalm, the psalmist says, you have set my feet in a broad place. When I hear that, the image that comes to my mind is a baseball field. That experience of going to a stadium and walking through the tunnel and suddenly seeing this expanse of green before you, a broad place. It's a sad thing that I may not get that experience this year. But the psalmist knows that feeling, knows it perhaps better than I do. The psalmist longs for freedom. It, it seems as if this psalmist is missing nature, is somehow locked up, perhaps as it suggests, under a siege, an ancient siege, which is a, a terrible circumstance to be in, or uh, beset by enemies. I mean, the psalm describes someone who is in a really difficult place, who is trapped, who longs to be brought out, who longs for freedom. But the incredible thing about this psalm is that even in that circumstance, even when this psalmist can say, I'm in distress, my eyes weep from grief, my neighbors scheme against me, all this stuff that this psalmist says, at the same time, the conclusion can be, the Lord preserves the faithful. This psalmist is sure that there are only two ways. The way of God and the way of, of the wicked, of idolatry, of false gods. And this psalmist is sure that one way leads to life and one way ultimately leads to death. It is an incredible certainty considering the harsh conditions this psalmist faces. It doesn't look like that could be true today or in the day of the psalmist. The righteous person <laughs> is beset has enemies, is fearful, is afraid. And the wicked, the evil, whatever, the, the idolaters, they seem to prosper. As in this world, sometimes it seems as if those who reject any morality are the ones who get ahead. And that is true today, that this, this pandemic is affecting the most vulnerable people. The, the virus itself, um, by infecting immunocompromised people, 
but also the way that the economic effects have, have especially hit people who were already in difficult positions. It doesn't seem just. It doesn't seem fair. We live in a world, perhaps it's a cliche to say, we live in a world that wants instant gratification. But I think behind that ability to instantly watch whatever we want, to instantly buy whatever we need, I think behind that is a desire to do something, to take action. We were at, at Lowe's the other day, and I, I was thinking about how I was not up to date on a certain theologian. And sitting in Lowe's, I ordered a book and it will be here next week. Now, part of that is I just wanted to take care of it. But really, I wanted to say that I had done something. And so it's understandable that in this situation, we want to do something. We want to take action. We want to, to make change happen. And yet, when life really happens, when the most difficult circumstances really come down upon us, there is usually very little to do. When a storm comes through, all I can do is sit down here and wait. When someone is ill, we have to depend on doctors and medical professionals and trust in the wisdom of others. When, when geopolitical and economic circumstances affect our lives, there is often very little we can do to change them. Sometimes all there is to do is to trust God. Despite the storms of life, sometimes it is all we have. That can be hard, especially when you want to take action. But having God to trust in, knowing God in the Holy Spirit now through Jesus Christ, uh, in the Father, that makes a difference when we do have to wait. And let me tell you what that means. If I did not know the God of Jesus Christ, if I did not know that God, all this isolation, this quarantine, all it would mean is that I was missing out, that I didn't get to go to the restaurant I wanted, that I was missing out on a vacation, all it would mean is that I lost something. But because I have God to trust in, I have gained something. The knowledge that in doing so, I am taking care of my neighbor. A neighbor whose life is fundamentally intertwined with mine that in doing this, I'm following the example of Christ. That even in my own inaction, through prayer, through study, I am still doing, I am still participating in God. And when I feel as if I must do something and cannot, I know that God is still at work, that God has not left us alone. I hope you have found the presence of God to be a comfort even in this difficult time. I hope you know that even in our inaction, God is at work. And I hope you know and I hope you can help me know that ultimately God is working for good. Would you pray with me? Lord, we pray today for all those in our community who, 
who face illness, who face sickness, in relation to this pandemic and in general, Lord, we pray for all those who, who cry out today. We ask that you may ultimately work good in the world. Lord, strengthen us in faith and strengthen this church in love. May we learn to trust in you. And may we find you at work in this broken world. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, God bless you, God keep you, and God love you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.